And welcome today, our interview, as promised, with none other than the human eraser, Luke Shen. What have you been doing lately, buddy? Give us the rundown. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me back on. Uh, lately, it, honestly, it's uh, just we went back to Vancouver after Toronto, got packed up in Toronto, went back to Vancouver for a couple weeks and uh, got the kids back into school and just a couple of little activities we had them signed up for before I got traded. And then uh, in the meantime, we were just packing the house up. Uh, Lots of moving and packing lately and uh, yeah, getting everything lined up. And now we're back in Kelowna, just been here for about two days. So it feels like summer's finally, you know, kicking off now. So the worst thing about being a pro hockey player in my memory was packing the family up twice a year, at least. And that's if you know where you're going and you go home afterwards and you've done it so much lately that I don't think people understand what it would take to pack up a family of five and just literally with all your possessions and hit the road. And it's terrible, but it probably makes you want to put some roots down somewhere to finish off your career. You know what? Yeah. We, well, you know, the moving, I think I even know how many times we moved. If I were to guess in the last five or six years, probably eight or nine times. I mean, we'd have to probably go back and tally but it's been a lot and um yeah when you start adding kids into the mix it's fine when it's just you and your whatever wife at the start or maybe you throw in one kid but when you start having multiple it's uh you know gets a little bit a little bit much you know you're just hauling everything from as you know everything to do with kids and uh yeah it's just you, you can't travel light anymore so and, and then in, on top of that you know we did it in the midst of uh, having a newborn right so yeah it was uh, it was crazy hectic times and yeah i mean uh be nice to settle down somewhere for sure uh for for a few years for the record uh rosie is sipping on some vino but we're recording this interview on monday night so don't get any ideas about no that's doing. just how you start your day in old alberta, old alberta. you should have surprised it's it's uh <laughs> not a little spice captain or something you got going there rosie for breakfast you can't even pronounce my hometown's uh name of my Olds? town so i don't even try but uh i'm supposed to be on the golf course right now but you keep begging to come on our show so i gotta work <laughs> late yeah that's exactly how it went that's exactly how it went. day two into my summer i'm hey jay can i get on your show hey man you we, we're the luke shen insider so we appreciate your time man <laughs> yeah. uh great to catch up with you once again uh, now that i've had a chance to sort of decompress uh you know everything that transpired what what was that run like back with the toronto maple Leafs this year yeah it was great i mean obviously it ended shorter than we all would have liked and i think we definitely had a team that you know could have gone a lot further and you know at the end of it looking back you run into unbelievable goaltending and give florida credit um you know they, they played real well as a team and they're kind of, you know, playing the right way and their game was, was really good heading into playoffs and obviously see what they did with Boston and, and for us against two, they, you look at the, like I said, the goaltending there, it was, it was at a historical rate there, I think for a little bit. So, I mean, uh, yeah, it was, but looking back personally at my time there, it was, it was crazy going back full circle, obviously start my career there. Um, you know, it was obviously ups and downs being such a young guy and, probably a little bit naive to the whole situation of what it meant to wear the blue and white and, you know, how to handle those ups and downs and coming back all these years later with, you know, the career and, you know, bumps along the road and the highs and lows and to kind of come back um, and get that opportunity again. It was, uh, it was pretty surreal. I, I've I had thought about it at times and obviously you never really think it's going to be a reality and to come full circle, it was really special. And, uh, I just really enjoyed it a lot more than I think too, than I did earlier on. Not to say I didn't enjoy it, but I just, I feel like you have a better appreciation for it. So it was pretty cool. And to come back there, like I said, with, uh, you know, you, the first time you go around, you're a young guy and you're kind of just taking it all in and you're, you know, enjoying the city a little bit more and coming back this time with a family. It was a whole new experience. And uh, yeah, it was just crazy how time flies. And a boy, Lucas. Well, and now that you've had time to process and all the other, would you say your chance of re-signing with them is like a hundred percent or like 110% or where are we at here? I don't know, Jay. I might have to hire you for my agent. You can get me some inside track here. I would, would, work, you ever the, I would work the phones hard for you. <laughs> I would. That's a good what idea, What would your pitch buddy. be, Rosie? What would your pitch be? Oh man, it would be a highlight reel massacre. <laughs> like I would play Wendell Clark, uh, all heart that YouTube thing, except oh, that, that's the best video of all time. time. Oh, I, I just play, I would just do that for you and I'd play it for GMs and I'd be like, you know what my fucking number is, and I'd walk out and it'd be hilarious. It'd be a bidding war. 
not to not to mention the off ice too. What a guy can bring to the to the uh, team dinners and getting the boys together, all that sort. Of, yeah, that's as big a part of it as anything, right? And you and I sat together on the plane. We you got, you got to be able to hot stove with the boys too, right? Luke, your training's going to suffer this summer, but you know what? At your age, it's just throw it out the window anyways, man. You're ready to go. You know what to do. You just need some flex all and a coffee and away you go. Buddy. <laughs> yeah, no, I know that was your routine, right? So, uh, yeah, no, actually, you know, you're, you're, you're the, you're the king of getting on the foam roll and cracking your teeth spine. I know that you throw that into the mix with your coffee. If I loosen hey, up Jay. those SI joints, look the fuck out. <laughs> it's funny uh, it's funny we have you on shenner because we had brian burke on last week and and he i don't know how the interview ended it was really really bizarre and rosie had no clue what he said and i had no clue what he said what did he say rosie have we figured that out yet oh uh, burke no, is a man been... oh he's so awesome man and he said something that i know was fucking something about oxygen i couldn't hear you get him the oxygen or yeah. something fuck but we couldn't hear it very good. And then he kind of just chuckled and like hit end. And we're like, what did he say? <laughs> but we'll figure it out. Man, Ber- Berkey, uh, I, I mean, obviously, you know, he was, he was so good to me. I mean, he signed me back in the day and he traded me, but we've always kept in touch and we've always, um, you know, texted. And every time, you know, I'd go into an opposing building or he'd be on the road, we'd always make sure he'd go over and say hello. And, um, I, I don't know. It was crazy when when I was uh, in Toronto there, and I did that Luke's troops. We went to Afghanistan together, and it was me, him and I, and uh, it was Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys and Rick Mercer, like the Rick Mercer report, and um, who else? At least Laflamme from like CTV the National and stuff. We went over to Afghanistan on Canada Day, and I had no idea what to expect. He he had been over there before, but it was over there, and it was uh, it was July first, obviously, and he was the GM of the Leafs, so he was just working the phone all the time, like with the time change, everything too. And we were the way it was set up. We were staying like on on base there, and uh, we were pretty much sharing uh, like this little little room. Like I think it was like two little bunk beds, and there was just me and Berkey. And we were just <laughs> thinking, it was we so got the funny. Top bunk. Yeah, exactly. But no, he was so like I just remember that, and I remember being like how. You know, it was just a wild situation. I look back at it, I'm like, how the hell did I end up, you know, taking part in that? And just, yeah, Berkey, he's the all-time storyteller. I, I, uh, everyone, you know, loves to hear what he has to say. And uh, I'm sure he's always a great interview when you get him on. Hey, you always Luke, seem he- to be tight with some of these GMs. And sorry to interrupt, Rosie. Well, uh, you know, Berkey, uh, Kyle Dubas, uh, you're a foodie. I got to ask you this. So you're a foodie. Um, what restaurant would you recommend? What kind of cuisine would you recommend to watch that whole saga unfold with Brendan Shanahan and Kyle Dubas? What would you eat? Popcorn or something else? <laughs> oh, I, I, it wasn't this. Oh, I, I'm not getting into the saga. Like, no, I just, you know what? At the end of the day, it was, uh, I am a foodie. Yes. I uh, love, love crushing, uh, and then get my hands on. And, but, uh, no, I, at the end of the day, um, you know, hockey's one side of it and business is another, another side of things. And, uh, you know, obviously from management standpoint, coaches standpoint, player standpoint, you always, you know, it, it, you always think of the on ice thing. And at the end of the day, it's, it's on ice and it's off ice. So as players, we, we obviously don't know what would happen behind the scenes there, but, um, obviously Kyle's a great hockey guy. And so is so is Shani. They're, they're both, uh, you know, have elite positions in the league and have been around a long time because of, uh, you know, how, how smart they are and, and how good they are, uh, you know, thick in the game and, and, you know, leaders. So that's, uh, that's what I'll say on that. And, uh, no, yeah, hey, Luke, good stuff, good stuff. Right? I got it. Yeah, <laughs> I can't bury myself in that one. Good try, though, Nick. Thank you. Why Appreciate would you? That. Why would you? But, Lukey, in all honesty, being in the position that you're in, coming off a spot where, you know, presumably things went pretty well for you personally, do you allow yourself to start thinking about the team and 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 what's to come? And do you are you paying attention or do you got to wait till you actually sign? You know where you're going, then your focus goes to that team, whatever it may be. I mean, like after the season, yeah, you always reflect and like think, you know, what you could have done differently, what you liked about your game, what you didn't like and kind of, you know, for me, I have a hard time. Like like I, you know, you shut it off, but yet you always are kind of thinking about like the next season coming up or what I got to do to prepare for the next season. So it kind of, you know, it kind of doesn't escape ever. Like, I mean, I'm more, you know, back, uh, it's actually first day kind of getting back, you know, officially started training Been staying active, but back in the gym tomorrow and, you know, going to start skating the next week already. So you're always kind of thinking about it. I mean, from a team really. standpoint, it's hard to think about when you, 
you know, you, you, you aren't hundred percent sure where you're going to end up, but obviously, you know, whatever happens, you got to perform and, and play, you know, to what's expected. And for me personally, I mean, like my, my own mindset is, you know, try to continue to improve and get better. I, I know, you know, I'm getting older and that's kind of the one thing that, you know, people could always bring up, but I don't really care about the age aspect. I'm finding different ways to improve. And, um, every year there's, there's always something to work on. And, and, uh, that's kind of what I like about the whole, it's a grind and it's a challenge. And like, just, uh, that's what kind of keeps you you driven. And as soon as you lose that, I think it's probably when it goes stale and probably when it's time to hang them up. So personally, I think Rosie would be a terrible agent, but my cell point would be, look at what I did with Quinn fucking Hughes. Look what I did with Morgan <laughs> Riley, dude. Like I, you know, again, I'll admit it. Like I was really, really impressed. They whipped you guys together in the postseason. You brought the best out of him. He brought the best out of you. And it was a perfect combo. Like that would be my cell point. So I want to ask you behind the scenes at this point in your career, what are you looking for? Uh, what will be some of like the determining factors if you get to market around free agency and you try to decide your future here with your family? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, there's there's different things to decide. I mean, it, it just depends, I guess, you know, you never know. Like I free agency can go, I've been on the other side of it too, where you know it's it's a little bit quieter free agency, and you think that you know it's gonna be a little bit uh more glamorous than it is there's there's a certain amount of guys in the league that i think you know do pretty well and the, the big top end guys the guys put up the big numbers and and then there's you know some other guys that are kind of uh you know waiting to see what happens and see how things shake out so i don't want to get too comfortable and say you know i you know put my put anything ahead of you know the process of what's going to happen but for sure when you got a family you look at all the situations as far as um you know, what would be a good spot, obviously, you know, family wise, but on top of that too, you obviously want to go to a good team um, that has a chance to, to be in the mix to, to win. And also, like you said, fit too, fits a big thing. Right. So um, obviously there's no guarantees who you're going to play with ever, but I mean, you kind of look at depth charts and decors and see potentially what could shake itself out. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I really enjoyed, obviously, like you said, playing with, with uh, Hughesy the last, year and a half and you know really really i mean it's 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 nice that you nice compliment to play get the chance to play with him a guy like you know morgan too as well guys who are really good skaters and you know move the puck pretty well and escape trouble with their feet and pretty good on the offensive and blue line i mean obviously those guys it's uh it's it's really nice to get the chance to play with guys like that we love it, Lukey. Well, hell, I don't think you're going to be tipping your hand too much about what's going on behind the scenes personally, but I have a feeling the Leafs are going to want you. And my advice as your pending agent <laughs> is to go back there, finish where it started. You got four, maybe five good years on that roster, and I have a feeling you're going to win a cup, my man. Oh, wow. That's a bold prediction. I mean, you keep tipping those glasses of rouge back and anything, <laughs> anything can come to your brain. You never know. Keep drinking those you, things, man, and make some calls. Hey, I am a professional and you just listen. All right. You do what I tell you. Thanks for I coming on, Luke. It. We appreciate it, buddy. Say hi to Jess and all those kids. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on, guys. See you, buddy.